Hello, my fellow citizens of the world. Today I have come to drag Donald Trump. Whether you love to hate him or are just plain sick of hearing his name, this moment is for you. I must admit, I have enjoyed watching this flaming circus of garbage that he calls his campaign. But the United States of America is my country, and the Oval Office is not the set of a reality television show. I love branding and hashtags and catchphrases, but I am not the next president. The next president of the United States should be more than a meme we don't understand, but we retweet anyway. The next president of the United States of America should be educated, well-informed, measured, and experienced. This November, it is not a matter of which candidate should have the job. It is a matter of which candidate can actually do the job. When the next president of the United States of America feels very attacked, the option is not to... I'd like to punch him in the face, I'll tell you. Yeah, I feel very attacked. I wanted to hit a couple of those speakers so hard. Yeah, I feel very attacked. I'm going to bomb the shit out of them. It's true. This is just too fucking much. Who is this Republican nomination? He is the friend of the bully in your sixth grade English class who laughed when you got called sissy and faggot and fairy. He is the guy that watched and not only stood by and did nothing about the injustice, but he instigated it. He is the guy who spit in the toilet bowl before you got a swirly and didn't tell you where the jocks hid your underwear after gym class. Look at him and his supporters. You know them. These are the people that you tried to forget existed. You moved to a coastal city to escape, and you defriended on Facebook. These are the people that terrorized your childhood, and they want to make America great again. America is greater than ever, and we have fought hard in the battle for equality. But clearly, our fight is not over. Trump publicly opposes same-sex marriage, and he doesn't identify with the social struggles of the disenfranchised. While contemplating his run for office, he used a metaphor that only a rich white guy would think of, comparing the legalization of same-sex marriage to his reluctance to use a different kind of putter. It's like in golf. A lot of people, I don't want this to sound trivial, but a lot of people are switching to these really long putters. Very unattractive. It's weird. You see these great players with these really long putters because they can't sink three footers anymore. And I hate it. I am a traditionalist. I have so many fabulous friends who happen to be gay, but I am a traditionalist. His word garbage is so indecipherable that sometimes we don't feel the gravity and the bigotry of his statements. Marrying the man or the woman you love is not deciding to use a different length putter in a game for privileged people. It's being legally allowed to be a member of that country club in the first place. If you say, I have so many fabulous friends that happen to be gay, but I oppose their basic civil liberties, then you are not their friend, sir. You are not an ally. But just to button this up very quickly, sir, are you saying that if you become president, you might try to appoint justices to overrule the decision on same-sex marriage? I would strongly consider that, yes. Trump also endorsed the First Amendment Defense Act, which was introduced by anti-gay Republicans last year into Congress. This act would allow for government entities to discriminate based on religious belief. Remember Kim Davis, the county clerk that denied couples marriage license because she was working under God's authority? This act would protect her, and there is nothing okay with that. When you deny people their basic civil liberties, it is not freedom of speech. It is injustice. To those accustomed to privilege, equality can feel like oppression. There is a movement in our country and across the world of intense xenophobia. Xenophobia is the fear of that which you perceive to be strange or foreign. It can be directed inwards and work towards creating purity and preservation. Build that wall, build that wall, build that wall. And xenophobia can be directed outward in a violent way, calling for the eradication of that which is different. Fear is an incredibly dangerous force. And when those Second Amendment people get afraid, fear manifests itself into bullets from trigger happy fingers. Donald J. Trump incites violence and white nationalists flock to him. Donald J. Trump is not presidential material and his friends 
are not our allies. Last week, Stephen Bannon was appointed CEO of Trump's campaign, which signaled a wholehearted embrace of the alt-right. Bannon is the executive chairman of Breitbart, a conservative news site that literally published these headlines. Trannies whine about hilarious Bruce Jenner billboard. There's no hiring bias against women in tech. They just suck at interviews. Birth control makes women unattractive and crazy. How Donald Trump made it cool to be gay again. These last words were written by controversial columnist and notorious Twitter troll Milo Yiannopoulos, who was recently banned from Twitter for life after he incited a Twitter mob harass actress Leslie Jones. Milo, who created Twinks for Trump, pushes white ethno-nationalism as an alternative to political correctness. We can't worry about being politically correct. We just can't afford anymore to be so politically correct. On June 29, 2016, NBC released the following statement. Due to the recent derogatory statements by Donald Trump regarding immigrants, NBC Universal is ending its business relationship with Mr. Trump. I believe there's a catchphrase that sums up this statement. You're fired. After appearing on The Little Rascals and the 1999 episode of Sex and the City's The Man, The Myth, and The Viagra, Donald Trump went on to be a celebrated reality television host. But even on that stage, he was not the most successful. Sure, The Apprentice has been nominated for two Emmys, but do you know what other show has that distinction? And which one of these Emmy nominations was for best hosts? Now that's not shade, honey. That's truth. Mark Burnett, the executive producer of The Apprentice, also produced Survivor, The Voice, and Shark Tank. Basically anything the man touches turns to gold. So let's be honest, it's not Donald Trump that made The Apprentice success, just as it's not Carson Daly who draws viewers to The Voice. Carson Daly is not the Republican presidential nominee. He is the friendly face who counts us down to New Year's every year, was once a golf caddy for O.J. Simpson, and actually has two Emmys on his mantle. Donald Trump is a meat puppet. And from one meat puppet to the other, I see you, Donald John Trump. I see you. Donald is absurd. It's absurd that he could win. It's also absurd that I'm a man in a dress. But absurdity doesn't make anything less plausible or less true. So even though he is down in the polls, he could take a dive and recover. Or he could just drop out instead of face losing to a woman. I don't know what will happen, but I will not risk the outcome of silence. Don't let apathy take over. He will never win. It's not what you say on November 8th. You get to the polls and you vote. If you are gay, if you are a minority, or you just love our country, this is the moment that counts. If you are underage or not an American citizen, inspire, educate other constituents around you. These votes will determine if we have a future. So speak with your ballot. This message was paid for by Team Ganja.